Welcome to All Pro Football Data. My name is Jim Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about Troy Franklin, wide receiver out of Oregon, in terms of his production profile. Uh, we're going to be looking at all of his production data uh, for statistics, and then we're also going to look at where he kind of projects in terms of pro comparisons for him. Uh, Franklin has the most receptions in a single season by an Oregon wide receiver, and he might be, he might be the best wide receiver to ever come out of Oregon. At least that's what they tell me. That's what the internet tells me. So let's take a look at his data to see if that's the case. Now, going on to offensive market share scores, uh, for those that are new to the channel, new to the stuff that I do, uh, you take a raw statistic gathered from a school website or college football reference. Uh, that is turned into raw statistics that are then transformed into market share scores by taking an individual statistic and dividing it by the team total. That transformed statistic is then ranked against positional peers to get a percentile score, and that score is weighed against the age of a prospect to give you the offensive market share production score. Where did he turn out in terms of this particular metric? Pretty decently. Um, he had a 75 percentile uh, receiving yardage market share production score, uh, 81 percentile in terms of total offensive market share uh, production score, and then a 73 percentile in terms of his touchdown market share production score. The current data set for this statistic is 3,710 wide receivers since the 1969 NFL draft class. Yes, that's a lot of wide receivers, man. And when you get to the wide receiver efficiency scores, uh, raw statistics are gathered from school website or college football reference. The raw statistics are then ranked against positional peers and get a percentile score. And that score is weighted against the age score of a prospect. Uh, touchdown percentage is the number of touches divided by total touchdowns. So how many touchdowns they had per touch, essentially. And that gives you the offensive efficiency scores. Not every, not every wide receiver is going to test well. Uh, in terms of their overall market share, but how efficient were they when the, with the football in their hands? Did they get a lot of yards when the football got into their hands? Did they get a lot of touchdowns when the football got into their hands? That's what efficiency scores really measure. And in terms of Troy Franklin's efficiency, he was fantastic. 80 percentile in terms of his yards per reception and in the 80 percentile as well in terms of his touchdowns per touch score when you look at the all pro average the pro bowl average uh all the thresholds you could think of he pretty much hits above all those metrics that you're looking for at the position uh, in that particular area now adjusted production scores what this does is it adds context to the production so the age of a prospect is scored from youngest to oldest on the day that they are drafted then the age score is added to the offensive market share scores uh, strength the schedule score, strength the team score. Those scores are then ranked to give you the MSA or the market share, strength the schedule, strength the team, and age score. And the pass score adds all market share scores, efficiency scores, age score, strength the team, strength the schedule. Basically, it's a gumbo metric. Add all the product, add everything. Just throw it all in the pot to give you one number. And why does this matter? Because it's giving you context to the production. How productive were they for how old they were? How productive were they for the team that they were on? How productive were they for the level of competition that they faced? It adds context to the statistics to give you a better idea of who is better than who. Uh, because, yes, a guy at Kent State could put up 90 plus percentile in every single metric. But how good was he for his level of competition? How good was he for the team that he was on? And how old was he as a prospect? Those are real numbers that matter in terms of projection. And in terms of Troy Franklin, pretty dang fantastic. In terms of all of his numbers, 90 plus percentile in terms of age, 90 plus percentile in terms of his MSA score, and 90 plus percentile in terms of his PASS score. The reason why I separate the two is because efficiency scores sometimes mess with the overall production of a prospect. I think you have to look at prospects sometimes just based on their regular market share scores instead of adding efficiency, although sometimes it helps to give you a, a full spectrum on a prospect. And some wide receivers who don't have great market share are helped because of their efficiency score. So it kind of helps to kind of look at those things from two different perspectives. Now, going to the comparisons for Troy Franklin, um, his overall comparisons, Curtis Conway, James Washington, Taylor Jacobs, 
Steve Smith, not senior, the Steve Smith of the Giants. You guys, you Giants fans, you know who I'm talking about. You know I'm talking about Steve Smith from USC. I'm talking about Steve Smith from, uh, dang, where the heck? I'm having a hard time remembering. Oh, Utah. I ain't talking about Steve Smith, the senior from Utah. I'm talking about Steve Smith from USC. Then, of course, you got Jerome Lane, uh, JSN, who, of course, was drafted by the Seahawks last season. And Aurelius Ben, a name I did not know I had to say again, but I'll say it again right now. Based on this, you may be like, wow. That's not a lot of good names. But, again, it's just who he tested with based on his production numbers. This doesn't mean he's going to be a bust. It just means that this is kind of the kind of prospects he tested that tested similar in terms of his overall data. Now, <clears throat> in terms of outlook, Troy Franklin profiles as a pro bowl to long-term wide receiver in the NFL. The biggest weakness for Franklin is his overall production and touchdown production based on his market share. Franklin has a production and other factors to be considered a top five to 10 wide receiver in this draft class if he tests well at the combine. If Troy Franklin doesn't test well at the combine, he's probably going to be a top 10 wide receiver in this draft class. I'm just going to, I mean, regardless of what happens there, I think the combine is going to be a big factor for him because if he doesn't test well at the combine, he's going to go from being a top five wide receiver to way down there because there are some legitimate concerns in terms of his overall data. But I will tell you this much. I like him as a prospect. I don't necessarily think that he's going to be great out the gate. I could be wrong. Um, I think the offense that they play at Oregon is not necessarily an NFL offense. Uh, I think he plays in a lot of open space. And I think that there's some things that you haven't really got to see on him from a film perspective. Yes, I watch the film too, guys. Okay, I don't just do data. But with all that stuff out of the way, that is Troy Franklin's profile, guys. Uh, you can also check out my other work at Geometrics on Twitter. That's at J-I-M-E-T-R-I-C-S. You can check me out on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash J Coburn, J-C-O-B-E-R-N. Make sure to check out my other videos. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel, guys. Join my Patreon. Do whatever you need to do. Do whatever you need to do to join the family, all right? Just join it, okay? Just join it because we're taking over this year. 2024 is the data year, guys. Market share will take over this year. I'm coming for you. I don't know who I'm coming for, but I'm coming for you. Try to do a wrestling promo right now. But anyways, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace!